Do you feel like you're not getting better at League no matter how much effort you put in? Do you want to climb fast so you can play with your friends who are higher ELO than you, or just to reach your own competitive goals? Well, that's what we're here for. In this guide, we're going to outline five super easy to follow tips that will help you improve two to three times as fast as you were before. If you trust us and follow everything we'll talk about in this guide, we promise you will begin climbing much faster than everyone else around you. So let's start with the very first thing you need to start doing right away to improve. Here's something you may have noticed if you watch higher ELO or pro players play. Ever notice how they're always getting super greedy in their recalls? They often barely get it off, avoiding being cancelled. Well, most of the time they get out at least. Sometimes you can cue the laugh track of their failed base attempt. You may often wonder why they take these crazy risks just to save a few seconds. Why not just back off further and take a safe and guaranteed recall? This brings us to our first and most important tip at improving at League of Legends, being hyper efficient. League is a game of seconds, and unfortunately for you, high elo players just have more time in the game than you. You could have the exact same macro knowledge as a challenger player, and it may not matter because you're just slower at everything you do. Challenger players clear waves, farm jungle camps, recall, rotate around the map, kill wards, do objectives, etc., all of it faster than you do. Every second that they save can often turn into a snowball effect that saves them more and more time later on. Here's an example of how this could be the case. Let's say a pro player farms some waves in bot lane 5 seconds faster than a gold player would. This gives them just enough time to push up, take the gromp before the enemy jungle shows up, and get out. Now they're ahead 100 gold that the other player isn't. Maybe this lets them buy an extra long sword when they base, and this lets them farm the krug camp on their way to bot faster, which means that they're at the wave quicker than their opponent. They get priority, and have the first move to rotate to dragon to establish vision, and that wins them the eventual dragon fight. That may seem unrealistic realistic, but the point we want to get at is that you never know when those extra seconds will make the crucial difference in what you can and can't do on the map. How many times have you just barely not gotten away from a gank? Or how many times have you missed a kill opportunity that you would have had if you'd just been there three seconds earlier? I bet it's a lot. We don't have to prove it to you that being efficient matters. If you watched literally any challenger or pro player in your spare time, just pay attention to how much they're trying to optimize everything they do to save time. You'll find that there's almost literally no high elo player that doesn't understand the value of being efficient. And that's because having more time in your games means that you get more gold, experience, kills, towers, and so forth. That in turn becomes sort of a snowball effect. The further ahead of the curve you are, that means you're clearing waves, killing objectives faster, etc., which lets you get further ahead, which lets you do things faster, and so forth. This is a bigger snowball effect in League of Legends than you probably realize, and we'd urge you to make it a priority to make everything you do in this game as fast as possible. And you know what makes you climb ranks as fast as possible? Our hyper-improvement platform at skillcap.com. Why does it work? Because we teach you how to climb the right way, from the low elo perspective. We don't use challenger games to show you how to play versus challenger teams with challenger teammates like you see on streams and pro play. We instead get our hands dirty and figure out the right strategies to climb out of silver, gold, platinum, and diamond as fast as possible, which is why we money back guarantee your climb when actively using our service. So definitely check us out at Skillcap right after this. Our second tip isn't one most people like to hear, but it makes getting better at this game so much faster. Don't ever try to learn your champion's combos or tricks in the middle of a game. Just make the muscle memory in the practice tool and then start playing actual matches. Have you ever watched a guide for a champion you want to main and learn something you want to pull off? Let's use Ari and her charm flash combo as an example. You learn about it from a guide and then hop into a game thinking you're going to pull it off. You sometimes see opportunities to go for it, but if you mess up, you're surely dead. So you never pull the trigger. Or when you do try it, you end up with and also dying, making you never want to do it again. That's the problem. In a real game, the stakes are too high, and there's way too much going on for you to think about pulling something you've never done before off. So you become hesitant or never see an opportunity to use it, and yeah, it takes you forever to incorporate it into your actual gameplay, making your improvement so much slower. It's a bit boring, we get it, but if you really want to actually use the things you learn about your champion in a game, then just hop into the practice tool and mess around until you're firmly comfortable in performing the action. 30 minutes or an hour on your champion in the practice tool will immediately help you learn every combo you need to know and make it all muscle memory so you can actually pull these things off in your games and win more often. It's worth the time investment, especially if you're picking up newer champions to main. Our third tip may sound like it's really troll and dumb, but it's something we highly urge you to make a priority in your games, and it's to avoid team fighting in this game as much as possible. That's crazy, right? This is a team game. You can't avoid fighting with your allies, especially over objectives, no? This is true if you want to win the individual game that you're in. However, the best long-term way of getting better and climbing is to avoid team fighting as much as possible. The reason why is simple. You don't learn much by team fighting. 
Think about it. You're in a 5v5 encounter with nine other people. You have to keep track of way too many abilities, position around your own teammates, coordinate your engage with them, yada, yada, yada. It's information overload. There may be some basic team fighting tips you can follow, but it's impossible to apply them to every single fight since there's billions of different champion combinations that can exist in this game. Ultimately, good team fighting just comes down to instinct, which we can't teach that much, and it's even harder to learn and apply. Plus, there's two massive benefits to never team fighting, and they will help you climb way more rapidly. If you ever watch a high elo player playing in a lower elo bracket, you'll notice how it's very rare for them to actually fight with their teammates. That's because they know they have way more agency over the outcome of a fight the less people that are in it. Your actions matter way less in a 5v5 than they do in a 1v1 or 2v2. In those smaller skirmishes, your actions affect the outcome way more, allowing you to consistently come out ahead rather than hoping your teammates play well in a fight. If you feel like all your games are coin flips, this is probably why. Of course, you don't have any agency if all you do is group with your team and hope everyone plays well together, but the more important benefit is actually the easier time you'll have in improving. Team fights can go wrong for way too many reasons. Did you have good vision control? What cooldowns and summoner spells are up? Did the enemy team just get a good engage off, or was one of your teammates just out of position? Did everyone press their ultimates correctly? Etc, etc. But in those small skirmishes, you can pinpoint precisely what the problem was every time, and you can learn from it easier. And then in the future, you'll know how to engage in those similar encounters to make sure you always come out on top. This is why you should avoid team fighting as much as possible. Try to find smaller skirmishes before an objective happens so that you can secure it without ever having to 5v5. Or just don't go to the objective and choose to split push instead, or look for picks prior to the fight. Even the support role can avoid team fighting by going for picks with vision control or collapsing to help their side laners. We're not telling you to never team fight, and it's definitely not the worst thing you can do in a game. However, so much of the player base improves so slowly because of how often they just group up with their teams every single game. Again, it's not that it's always wrong to team fight, and you may lose games by not doing it, but it'll make your learning process so much slower in the long run, which is why we urge you to go for alternative alternative ways of winning. On to our fourth tip. If you've played team games for a while, you may be familiar with a rule we're about to bring up, the 40-40-20 rule. Coaches or players will often tell you about this rule to ease your woes about having bad teammates. The rule goes like this, 40% of your games are unwinnable because your teammates will just suck. 40% of your games will be free wins because you'll have good teammates. And the other 20% of games are the ones where your actions truly matter to the outcome of the game. It's a nice rule, but we don't really like it that much. Players often get confused by what it even is saying. Does it mean that you don't try 40% of your games because you lost anyway? What about when you have a good teammate? Do you just sit back and chill, enjoying the carry? So everything you do is irrelevant except for 20% of the time? How do you know when it's that 20%? The actual numbers are also a bit weird, misleading, and yeah, we found this just confuses players more often than not. Ultimately, it's just a crutch people tell themselves to not tilt about having a bunch of bad teams in solo queue. There's a much better and simpler rule to follow in League. You can learn in 100% of your games, no matter what. Yeah, some games are completely out of your control and there's nothing you can do about that. However, you can always play in a way that helps you learn as much as possible. It doesn't matter if your play is going to win the game or not, or if you might lose going for it. All that matters is that you play to improve. That's it. This goes hand in hand with our previous tip about never team fighting. Yes, you'll lose games by playing to learn and doing stuff like not fighting with your team. However, you'll come out ahead in the long run because you'll get more value out of every game than anyone else. You'll find that the outcome of every individual game you play won't matter because you'll You'll be improving and gaining elo naturally, rather than trying to brute force a win in every single game. People want to reach their elo goals, like getting diamond in the wrong way. They focus on winning too much, and how their day or week went overall. But how you get diamond is actually really simple. You just have to be a diamond skilled player. That's it. So play to learn. You may have noticed the trend that most of our tips are about long-term growth rather than the stuff that will help you immediately improve. And our final tip is no different. What you're going to want to do is to enable your rune stats to show during the game. Not only that, but you'll also want to make it a habit of hovering over your items that show breakdowns of how much value they've gotten throughout the match. We know a lot of players just follow standard builds that they see in YouTube guides or websites a lot of the time, and we're not telling you to stop. But you should know that a big part of getting better at League of Legends is learning how to adapt your build from game to game. It's not a stretch to say that knowing how to properly set up your character can be a 10 to even 20% power increase if done properly every single game. That is a massive edge over other players who don't know how to optimize their builds. And the only way to get this advantage is by learning to see patterns for when certain runes or items perform best. For example, if you always default to the bone plating rune in the resolve tree, you'll quickly realize when it's good and not to take it if you have your runes showing constantly. Versus ranged laners, they're able to easily poke it off with a single auto attack, meaning that you'll get close to zero 
value with this rune during the lane phase. If you play with your rune showing, you'll very quickly begin to see how awful it is to take, and you'd quickly learn to adapt to something like Second Wind in those type of matchups. As far as items go, since players rarely hover their items and read what value they've got, they often don't realize the type of build mistakes they might be making. For example, a super common error we see is players over-prioritizing defensive options like Crown of the Shattered Queen or Shield Bow, but if you actually hover those items, you'll soon realize just how little they blocked in most games. We're asking you to do this not because you'll become a build expert immediately, but because over time you'll learn to spot patterns for when certain runes or items are good and when they're not. Then you can actually begin adapting your builds from game to game and have big advantages over your opponents who don't, which will help you climb more quickly. And that was our final tip to help you improve much faster at League of Legends. We promise that if you follow these tips, that you'll begin outpacing everyone in terms of improvement and surely reach the ELO goal that you're seeking. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll catch you in the next guide.